our Prophet Sallallahu said, there shall be after me 30 Dajjals, all of them Kadhab. Everyone is claiming that he is a Nabi and there is no Nabi after me. There are many, we can call them in English, Dajjal with a small d. Or we can say mini Dajjals, no problem. But there is one Dajjal with a big D or the major Dajjal. There was an individual who lived at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whom even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a period of time didn't know is he that Dajjal or is he a minor Dajjal. Multiple narrations exist about a certain young man who lived in Medina and he was a sorcerer. He had a connection with the jinn and he was a magician and he would pretend he knew the future and he would foretell the future. You know, in English, we call them a soothsayer. And in our religion, anybody who pretends to know the future is a liar. So there was this magician at the time of the Prophet ﷺ by the name of Safi ibn Sayyad. And when our Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, Safi ibn Sayyad was a young child and he was about to reach puberty. So he's around 13 years old. And that's when our Prophet begins interacting with him. The Prophet ﷺ heard that there is this young child who has these visions of the jinn. He predicts the future. And so Umar and the Prophet ﷺ, they walked towards a group of children who were playing and amongst them was Safi ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad was not aware that the Prophet was coming until he was right behind him. And Ibn Sayyad turned around and the Prophet was there. So the Prophet said to Ibn Sayyad, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? And Ibn Sayyad said, I testify that you are the Rasul of the unlettered people. Ibn Sayyad then said to the Prophet and he's 12, 13 years old. Look, he said, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? What did we say? One of the signs of a Dajjal is what? Dajjal claims he is Rasul. And this also shows shows you that this is what happens when you start getting involved in magic. You really become a very evil person. How dare in front of the face of the process and you are twisting the question and you're saying, okay, you ask me now, let me ask you, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I believe in Allah and his messenger. And he said to Ibn Sayyad, what do you see? What visions come to you? Ibn Sayyad said, I see two people come to me. One of them tells the truth. One of them tells lies. Lies. The Prophet ﷺ said, rather, the matter has been made confusing for you, meaning both of them are telling lies. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, I have a test for you. I have hidden something for you. And what was that thing that he was hiding? He was hiding a verse from the Quran, which is, فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ So the Prophet ﷺ had recited this verse to the Sahaba. And he's saying, I'm testing Ibn Sayyad. He says he knows ilm al ghayb He says he knows everything. Okay, I just recited this verse. Let's see, does he know did I recite this verse or not? This is a man. He is claiming he knows ilm al ghayb He knows everything. Okay, I just recited a verse 20 feet away from him. Let's see whether he can tell his followers what I just recited to all of you. Simple test. Do you know what I have hidden for you? And this shows you Ibn Sayyad did have contact with the jinn, but the jinn are not all knowledgeable. All he could say was duh, duh, duh. And the verse was, فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِسْمَا بِدُخَانٍ مُّبِينٍ And the jinn narrated two letters, دُخْ 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 and not the whole verse. So there was some jinn that was communicating with Ibn Sayyad and he wasn't able to do it. So the Prophet said, Shut up, O enemy of Allah, you shall never go beyond your meagerness. You think you are so big, you're never gonna go beyond this. Umar ibn Khattab said, Ya Rasulullah, allow me to execute him. This is a Dajjal. He says he is Rasulullah. He's communication with the jinn. His penalty is execution. Ya Rasulullah, allow me to execute him. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If he is that Dajjal, you shall not be able to kill him. And if he is other than that Dajjal, your killing won't benefit anyone. He's nothing. Leave him be. Which was the case. He became a footnote in history. Majority of Muslims don't even know about his name, even though during the time of the Sahaba, he was somewhat of a big deal. Now, if he is that Dajjal, you shall not be able to kill him. Why? Because who shall kill that Dajjal? Isa alayhi salam. Another hadith is that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam went to go test Ibn Sayyad and he walked towards his house 
with some of the Sahaba and he hid behind some date palms trying to see Ibn Sayyad in a way that Ibn Sayyad would not see him. But Ibn Sayyad's mother saw the Prophet in the distance. So she shouted out, Ya Safi, O Safi, watch, be careful. Look, there is Muhammad, the Rasulullah So he turned around and he saw the Prophet and there was again some conversation that did not result in anything fruitful per se. And that Ibn Sayyad, he continued to live in Medina after the time of the Prophet and a number of Sahaba swore by Allah that that is the Dajjal. And of them was Umar ibn Khattab. He would make halaf with Allah that that is the Dajjal. Also Jabir ibn Abdullah, the famous Sahabi, he felt that that is the actual Dajjal. Nafi' said, I heard my master ibn Umar say, Wallahi, I have no doubt that Masih al-Dajjal is ibn Sayyad. So Umar and his son ibn Umar, they felt that ibn Sayyad is none other than that Ad-Dajjal. And there's a famous narration as well that is mentioned in Sahih Muslim that once Ibn Umar met Ibn Sayyad in the streets of Medina and he had a fight with him, verbal fight. And he made Ibn Sayyad very angry. And Ibn Sayyad walked away stomping, very angry. So Ibn Umar then visited the house of his sister Hafsa, our mother Hafsa. And Hafsa heard the news that Ibn Umar and Ibn Sayyad had a confrontation in the bazaar, in the public sphere of Medina. This is after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. Hafsa said to her brother, What is the matter with you? And Ibn Sayyad, Why do you have to interfere with him? Don't you know that the Prophet ﷺ said, So this is a hadith now, That the Dajjal shall come and appear after something has caused him to become angry. Meaning, why are you poking him? Why are you prodding him? Why are you getting him angry? What is your business with the man? Let him be. We don't want the Dajjal to come. Which means even Hafsa might have been sympathetic that Ibn Sayyad is who? Is that the Dajjal? And that's one family, Hafsa, Ibn Umar, Umar. They're one family and they thought that Ibn Sayyad is the actual Dajjal. Now, this issue of Ibn Sayyad being the Dajjal was denied by other Sahaba. And the most famous narration we have in this regard, which is one that is somewhat funny and somewhat sad at the same time, and this is also in Sahih Muslim, is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that one time I was doing Hajj or Umrah with Ibn Sayyad and the time came for the caravan to stop. And when the caravans basically stopped, everybody ran away from Ibn Sayyad and I was the one left next to him. And I became very terrified of him because of the rumors going around about him. This is after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. Still the rumors are there. Abu Sa'id wants nothing to do with the guy. And looking around, he saw I was the only camel there. So he brought his belongings and he sat down next to me. I said to him, it is so hot over here. Maybe it's better for you if you rest in that shade over there. Just get away from me. So he got the hint, he stood up and he went over there. And eventually some meat came to me. So Ibn Sayyad stood up to share with that meat. So now food has come. And generally speaking, when you're in one caravan, you're going to all share the meal. Okay. Nobody wanted to deliver the meal to him. So they delivered it to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and Ibn Sayyad wants to now share that meal. So he came and he sat down with me and he had a glass of milk with him. So he gave me some milk and he said, go ahead, take some. So I said, this milk is warm and I don't like warm milk. And the only reason I didn't want to drink it, this is him saying, is because I did not want to touch anything he touched. So Ibn Sayyad said, Ya Aba Sa'id, how I wish that I could take a rope and tie it on that tree and commit suicide because of what the people say about me. In other words, he knows exactly why Abu Sa'id is not sitting next to him, he's not sharing the milk with him, and it's hurting Ibn Sayyad. Ya Aba Sa'id, don't you know from being from the Ansar what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? Ya Aba Sa'id, aren't you one of the most knowledgeable people about the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ya Aba Sa'id, don't you know that the Dajjal is a kafir and I am a Muslim? Ya Aba Sa'id, don't you know that the Dajjal shall have no children and I have left my children in Medina? By the way, these are all signs. Ya Aba Sa'id, don't you know that Dajjal shall not enter Mecca and Medina. And here I am having left Medina on our way to Mecca. Now he's giving some solid points here, right? And Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, he continued making these arguments until I was about to have a soft spot for him. Then what happened? 
Then he said, but by Allah, this is Ibn Sayyad saying to Abu Sayyid Khudri, I know who the Dajjal is and I know where he shall be born and I know who his parents are in one version and I know where he is now. That throws a spanner in all of this. How do you know all of this, O oh, Ibn Sayyad? So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, after having his heart softened, feeling guilty, maybe in doing the guy wrong, now for sure his face must have changed when he said, but I know who he is and I know where he is. All of a sudden the terror comes back to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and he says, may you be cursed, Ya Ibn Sayyad, for what you have done. And he walks away. So Ibn Sayyad is no joke. There was some murkiness about him, about who he was. However, eventually Ibn Sayyad simply disappears. We don't know when he died, but clearly Ibn Sayyad was not that Dajjal because he himself gave all of these signs that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri had to acknowledge. And Ibn Taymiyyah as well mentions the issue of Ibn Sayyad, by the way. And he said that Ibn Sayyad was one of the minor Dajjal and the major Dajjal is going to come. Whether he died a Muslim or not is another issue because Ibn Sayyid is saying, I am a Muslim and the Dajjal is a Kafir. And this has caused a huge controversy amongst the scholars. Allah knows best, but this last phrase that he said to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri really throws a spanner. Means he still had contact with the world of the jinn and he still has some issues that are un-Islamic. So he dies in murky circumstances. The bottom line, in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a cryptic figure who was a minor Dajjal in that time frame. And because he was still a young child, the Prophet ﷺ did not know, is he gonna grow up to become that Dajjal or not? And the Prophet ﷺ passes away and that confusion lingers on in the Sahaba. Some of them still think he is the Dajjal, but we now know that he could not have been that Dajjal. And we leave his affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.